fair warning, this video is going to be a little bit of a rant. So I've tried to stay away from doing this kind of video uh, since I've started. To me, it's, you know, a lot of people do it. I, I prefer, you know, looking at stats and, and, and trying to analyze things, but every so often I come up against a topic that I'm passionate about and that I feel like, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll go into the numbers, uh, but, but right now I just kind of want to get my feelings out there and, and maybe we can have a conversation about it. So absolutely, you know, go down in the comments, find me on Twitter, you know, I, I want to talk about this because this is really interesting. I want to talk about financial fair play. It's been in the news because of a story by The Athletic that's been confirmed by several sources, or at the very least reprinted by several, several sources, talking about how Manchester City in England is going to escape punishment from UEFA. UEFA had initially charged them with breaching financial fair play. So if you're not familiar with financial fair play, what it is is a rule by UEFA stating that a team is not allowed, a club is not allowed to spend more money than they've taken in over the past year, plus a little bit extra that the owner can finance himself. So it's designed to make sure that no team is allowed to spend a ton of money because they have a rich owner or something and buy a bunch of players and, and start dominating. And if you're familiar with soccer at all, you will know that, that Man City seems to kind of be going down that route a little bit. Now, I also want to uh, give a little bit of context here. I have not been a soccer fan my entire life. I am pretty much a super fan of the sport right now, uh, but it's, it's not been that way. And Manchester City was actually the team that really got me interested in the sport of soccer. It was around like 2010, 2011. And I actually started to play with them on FIFA. You know, my best friend got me into it. And Man City was the team I selected. And I absolutely loved that Man City team at that time. The more the years have gone on though, the more that you see how much they're spending and, and so the less I've been invested uh, because I, I just feel less of a connection to the club. I mean, when I got in, it was Yaya Ture, it was Sergio Aguero, Joe Hart was my absolute favorite player, it was Vincent Company. it was David Silva, it was Balotelli for the year that he was good and you know, he was involved in that play for, for City to win the Premier League. You know, it was all these guys like Edin Dzeko before he left. Um, but now you get a lot of guys that I'm just not particularly attached to. Um, so my my personal fandom for, for City has kind of gone away. Um, so that's where I'm coming from. And so I'd like to think that I'm coming at this from more of an objective standpoint than I would have probably five years ago. And the reason why that's important is because I think what's going on with Man City right now is is very, very troubling for me. If you've watched soccer at all, you know that soccer has pretty much been dominated, at least in Europe, by teams that have money. Man City, Real Madrid, Barcelona, uh, Juventus, PSG, uh, Man U, Liverpool to an extent, although that's a little bit different. We can kind of talk about that. You know, and, and it's not necessarily the worst thing. I mean, I, I don't want to get into the argument about whether or not we should, you know, do something about the way that the transfer system works, you know, in in general, if we should, you know, remove money from the game or, or something like that. Um, I don't want to get into that right now. I more want to talk about UEFA and FIFA's rule. They instituted financial fair play to stop this kind of thing from happening. And they've already charged City, and I believe they found them guilty of some kind of violation and they fined them a couple years back. This is according to the Daily Mail. Now, the thing about it is, is that this is now the second time and City is going to escape punishment or at least escape some kind of suspension, some kind of ban from European football or, or something like that. To me, if you if city actually did something wrong and that and that's the other thing so it's very very hard to prove these kinds of things because money it goes weird places it comes from weird sources and with city in particular just to give you a quick rundown of the situation that's going on they were accused of 
of the owner, or more specifically, a holding group that was owned by the owner of Man City, they were accused of that holding group paying money to City and then the club listing it under, I believe it was some kind of sponsorship fee or something like that. And so it didn't look like, it didn't show up on the books as the owner paying in money. So it's going to be very hard, obviously, to prove that the owner and the holding group actually did that, especially because the owner is based in the country of Saudi Arabia and it's UEFA, which is based out of, I want to say France, I could be wrong on that, but they're not based in Saudi Arabia, and Manchester City and the English Football Association, obviously both based in England. So it's very hard to solicit data to solicit data from Saudi Arabia and solicit any kind of records. So let's assume for a second that City has done something wrong here that would breach financial fair play. And if you look at the numbers, the total that they've spent over the last five years, they've spent almost they, they've spent almost three quarters of a billion dollars over five years. Over ten years, they've spent over one billion euros, over one billion dollars over the course of 10 years. It's very unlikely to me that they haven't violated financial fair play somewhere in there by, by doing all that. I'm looking specifically at the 2017, 2018 transfer windows, over 200 million euros in, <laughs> over that year. I mean, there's no way they didn't violate financial fair play in, in that year. I'm not an expert on it, but just from what I know, it seems very unlikely that they would have made that much money in that year and you know that much money that they would have to then cover transfers right because you got to pay the wages and you have to pay the stadium rent and all of these other things right so here's the thing financial fair play is not perfect the way that it's done teams can get around it and it doesn't to me really attack the root problem of big money in football and that's a whole other discussion it's a whole other video that we can get into but what financial fair play is designed to do is stop this exact thing from happening you are supposed to stop owners and their holding groups and their offshore accounts and whatever else they have from getting involved in football and so you should have figured out a way and it's very easy for me to say this this is not my 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 main argument but it's just something that gets on my nerves is that when you instituted financial fair play you should have found a way to easily figure out whether or not a team is at least at least you would be suspicious of them possibly doing something wrong it took them very it took them a long time to figure it out with man city and we've seen other teams escape these types of serious punishments. I mean, AC Milan comes to mind. I believe that was just this summer. You have PSG being investigated and nothing's happened. You've had uh, Real Madrid being investigated and nothing's happened. I don't know if any of those teams did something wrong. I hope they didn't, but the pessimist in me is going to say, yeah, they probably did do something wrong, but here's the thing. Why would UEFA or FIFA actually have a stake, a, a business stake in making sure that they can't do it? Real Madrid draws a lot of money. PSG, PSG draws in a lot of money. Man City draws in a lot of money because they have tremendous players. Tremendous players that people tune in to watch. They have the best players on earth. You name the top 10 players on earth right now, and I guarantee you they belong to either Juventus, Barcelona, Real Madrid, PSG, Man City, or Liverpool. There are six teams that contain the top 10 players on the face of this planet right now. And that's great for business. That's great for TV deals. There's a reason the Premier League makes so much off of TV deals. It's great for all that, but it's not great for the sport. And long term, people like me and a lot of people like me are going to start to become disillusioned with the sport of soccer because it's all about the money. When, when you have a situation where you basically have the same three teams that are competing for the Champions League over and over and over again, and finally Liverpool breaks in, and now they're going to compete again. So basically it's the same four teams that are competing for the Champions League over and over and over again. Even I start to get bored. And I love soccer. I watch it all the time. But even I'm starting to get bored at it and frustrated at the lack of competition. And when it comes to financial fair play in particular, 
Why would you have the rule if you're not going to use it to punish any team? What's the point of this? What's the point? Of it seems like a charade. It seems like something that they've done, that they've implemented, just so that they can say, well, yeah, we're trying to fix a problem of big money in football right now. But when you have teams that on the face of it look like they've committed some kind of violation somewhere, how? How can you justify not at the very, I mean, I, I mean, the, the fact that that the report right now, and this could change, but the fact that the report right now is, well, no, they're not going to get major punishment. Okay, well, well why not? Uh, just because UEFA and FIFA said so. If they can give me a reason, if they can show documents and say, look, we, we actually looked into it and it turns out that there, you know, there wasn't any wrongdoing, City did make more money, they, they're within all the bounds and all that. You know what, fine, fine, if they can prove that, then we move on to the other discussion about in the absence of financial fair play, how do we keep big money out of football? And that's a topic for a whole other time. The problem is, is that when it comes to the AC Milan situation, when it comes to the PSG situation, and now when it comes to the City situation twice, they failed to provide any information like that. They've just said, nope, you can take our word for it that they haven't done anything wrong and they're going to continue to play. And oh, by the way, it makes us a lot of money because if City wasn't in the Champions League, we'd lose money. And fine, okay, all of these places, all right, they're, they're all designed to make money. They're all businesses, so fine. I don't, I don't really care about that. But then why did you institute a rule that basically flies directly in the face of your ability to make money. I mean, the rule that you instituted financial fair play is in direct contrast to your to 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 your objective as a business is making money. Okay? So either institute some kind of salary cap or something that would spread the money across all of the teams and all of the leagues and and that Again, it's a video, it's an entirely separate video that I'm not gonna get into today. All I'm saying is financial fair play, the way that it's constructed and the way that they have actually enforced it is the worst of both worlds. They don't wanna enforce it, UEFA doesn't wanna enforce it, and it's incredibly hard to enforce anyway, even if they wanted to. Now, I'm not accusing everyone in UEFA of being anti-sport. I mean, the whole reason we're doing this is for sports to be competitive. And it's not like these teams are cheating. They actually have this money. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, Manchester City is embroiled in this controversy and not, you know, Nottingham Forest or, or something like that. So the teams aren't cheating. But if you're going to have this rule, then do something with it. Enforce it. Because I'm looking at this situation now and I'm saying, well, if City gets away with this, then every team's going to get away with it. And then at that point, well, we'll just, we'll see Real Madrid, we're going to see Barcelona, we're going to see Liverpool, we're going to see City every single time in the Champions League. And if that's what UEFA wants, if that's what the fans want, then more power to them. That's going to be the fans' decision. But the way that financial fair play is written right now, the way that it's being enforced, right now is not acceptable. It has to change, given this particular situation. So I'm sorry to go on a rant for, for this entire video, but like I say, every so often, it's just a little bit cathartic to speak on something that, that I'm passionate about, and if it's just a stream of consciousness out there, again, I apologize, but let's discuss, let's talk about it in the comments section. You guys know I respond to every comment so let's talk about it. Let's have a let's have a discussion. Comment section on Twitter at Griff from GA. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it to the end, I really, really appreciate it. Subscribe for all of our content now and in the future. We'll see you next time.